Good evening. Welcome to worship at Bread of Life, Deaf Luther Church. This is a special worship service, which we are calling Blue Christmas and Longest Night Worship. My name is Michelle Lewis, and I am the pastor here at Bread of Life. And we are very glad and grateful that you have joined us in this worship service this evening. My name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon at Bread of Life. I'm David Evans, sign language interpreter. Our service this evening will begin with some stillness and there will be times of stillness throughout this worship service. We do that on purpose because it helps us to slow down. It helps us to calm down to focus. And we do that to ask God to help us participate the, um, in our life, that we don't withdraw or retreat from our life, but that we participate today and throughout the holiday season. As you enter into worship this evening, we ask that you would gather a few things with you. Get a candle to light and to have near you during worship. This is a special worship service when we remember people who have died and so we encourage you to gather pictures of those people that you loved who have died. And because it is 2020 and it's a weird year, an awful year in some ways, we encourage you to collect some pictures or maybe write down a list of all of the things that you are missing, all of the experiences this year that are kind of put on hold. So it might be pictures of your family. It might be um, you know, a picture of a vacation you were planning that you can't do right now. Maybe it's a picture of a favorite restaurant that you would go to with friends. Maybe it's, you know, the opportunity to go um, spend time with your extended family. So we encourage you to get all of those things, gather them together before we enter into worship. So there will be a couple of minutes of a picture. So you'll have time to do that, don't worry. Um, if you are worried about not being ready to start, you can pause this um, service. That's one of the nice things about it being online. You can pause 
you can get all your stuff collected. And then when you're ready, you can sit down and enter into worship. So this evening, we gather in this worship service to contemplate three concepts related to grief and loss. First, we take time to name our losses. So what are those things that we miss? Because in 2020, the world has experienced unprecedented losses. At this point, more than one and a half people in the world have died from COVID and nearly 300,000 have died from COVID in the United States. Almost 10 million jobs have gone away in 2020. And because people have lost their jobs and their businesses, they feel very insecure. The rhythms of our life that felt familiar, all of those things that we would go and do every week, the variety of gathering with family and friends and our community, all of those things are on hold. The adventures that we experienced in, with travel in other years, seeing other parts of our country and the world those things are on hold too. Plus, plus we have continued to experience loss related to violence and racism. Some people are grieving for their loved ones who died because of violence or because of racism. Some people are grieving because they have been threatened by violence. And some people are grieving because they have a new awareness of injustice and racism. And that awareness has changed their whole worldview. So we take time this evening to name our losses. Second, we remember the gifts and the blessings that we received from relationships lost. We can be grateful for those who have died. And not accept that the death was, quote, good or, quote, a lesson or that God needed that person. As we remember the people that we love who have gone before us, we can be grateful again for the lives that they shared with us.
the third concept that we contemplate this evening together is that darkness is not a bad thing. Today is December 21st, and there is more darkness than light in our day here in Minnesota. Darkness is around us a lot. And if we think and feel that darkness is bad and scary, we will spend most of our time avoiding the world around us. So this evening, we name, we identify that darkness is not bad. It is different. It slows us down. It quiets our minds and calms our spirits. And we remember that dark, darkness is needed for things to grow. This year's Blue Christmas service will follow a simple format. First, we will light candles. And as we light those candles, I encourage you to type in the names of your loved ones or to type in the things that you are missing this year. Put those in the comments of our worship service. Then we all, as we go through this worship together, we all can see those names. We can see the things that we are missing. After we light those candles, then we will go through this pattern. We'll introduce this con the concept that we're um, con thinking about contemplating and then Dorothy will share the um, Psalm 23. Then there will be a picture that relates to the Psalm and the concept that we are think, um, contemplating. And then I'll add a few comments that help us connect the um, psalm and the concept. And then we'll have a minute with just the candles showing. So we'll go through that pattern three times. And it is our hope and our prayer that this will allow you time to sit with your grief and time to be comforted with God's words and God's promises. And if you have not already gathered your candles and your pictures, we encourage you to pause the worship video and collect all those things and then enter into worship.
the first concept we contemplate this evening is to identify and name our grief to help make it feel normal. This night, we feel like we are in the valley of the shadows. We are scared. We are sad. We are lonely. It is hard to see what is ahead. It is hard to see. Sorry, I gotta start again. The first concept we contemplate this evening is that we need to take time to identify our grief and to name those things we are missing. Often we want to hide from doing that, hoping that those feelings will just go away if we don't name it. But the truth is when we name our grief, when we identify all those things we are missing it helps to normalize our feelings. This night, we may feel like we are in the valley of the shadow of death. Sad, scared, or lonely. It is hard to see what is ahead. And those few things that we can see look scary and hard. We are not sure what is on the other side of our grief. And maybe we are worried that the sadness we feel this Christmas will be too much for us to carry. This is normal. You are not alone. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack for anything. God will help me to lie down in green meadows. By serene water, God will guide me. God will return my soul. God will guide me along the paths of righteousness for the sake of God's name. And even though I will walk through the valley of deepest darkness, I will fear no evil for you will be with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. You will set a table for me opposite my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup has overflown. Thus goodness and love will follow me 
all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of God for the length of my days. Often in our society, we are encouraged to just get over our grief and sadness. As a society, we tend to be anxious and worried. And deep feelings of sadness and grief are uncomfortable. And here in the United States, that kind of deep feeling makes people even more uncomfortable. And still, every one of us has those deep feelings. There's often a sense that if we don't identify or name those feelings, if we just keep it quiet, those feelings, they'll just go away. But in truth, when we identify our feelings and understand ourselves a little bit better, then those feelings don't take over. Instead, they become part of our normal experience. Everyone feels sad sometimes. 
It is not, uh, it is normal for you to feel sad too. At this time of the year, it's common to feel many, many different feelings, often all at one time. So you might feel happy and sad and frustrated and excited all at the same time. So take some time to check in with yourself about your feelings and be kind to yourself. The second concept we are contemplating this evening is that idea that we can, at the same time, be grateful for people who have died, that we loved. And we don't have to accept that their death was good or that it was cause to teach us a lesson or that God needed that person. So this night, we may be trying to thank God for the experience of learning or understanding ourselves better after someone dies. Instead, let us thank God for those relationships, for the people we got to love, for the time we had together. Yes, we may have learned about ourselves. And we may know ourselves better now. And, and it is still true that we miss those people. And that we would love to have more time with them. Psalm 23. Oh, my beloved, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. You bring me to green pastures for rest. And lead me beside still waters, renewing my spirit. 
you restore my soul. You lead me in the path of goodness to follow love's way. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow and of death, I am not afraid, for you are ever with me. Your rod and your staff, they guide me, they give me strength and comfort. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my fear. You bless me with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the heart of the beloved forever. I remember very well when a friend of mine died at Christmas time in 1994. She had just turned 18 and she died five days before Christmas. I remember that many people would say things like, you know, God just needed her more than we did. I know they were trying to make sense of the terrible loss. And they were trying to ease 
their own pain and their feelings of helplessness. But they were wrong. <laughs> they were wrong then and it's still wrong now. The world is worse because my friend died so young. I am so grateful that I got to know her because when I look back on my life and my journey, I remember how much we helped each other really to be silly. We were both very serious young women and together we could blow off some steam and let go of that seriousness. When I remember our times together, I'm so grateful for her and for her life. And when I think of the deep sadness that her mom and her sisters still experience now, I am still so sad. People die, but their deaths are not God's ways of teaching us or fixing us or correcting us. People die, but not because God needed them more in heaven than we need them here with us. In this life, people die. We, we can be grateful for those people those precious ones that we have loved, who have gone before us. And at the same time, we can say we would love to have more time with them. The third concept that we contemplate this evening is the idea that darkness is not bad. And in truth, we need darkness for things to grow. If you plant seeds and there is no darkness, those seeds do not grow. This night is the longest night in the Northern Hemisphere. Today, we only had eight hours and 46 minutes of daylight. This day, we have been in the dark twice as much as we have been in the light. And 
And yet, we often feel as if the darkness is completely different from the light. And we feel as if darkness is scary or even bad. Darkness is not bad. And we need darkness for things to grow. Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The Lord lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. The Lord guides me in proper paths for the sake of God's good name. And even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table for me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full that it spills over. Yes, goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live.
This night is the longest night of the year. And it arrives as we near the end of the Advent season. Advent is a time in our church when we practice waiting and watching, exploring and preparing for Christmas. In our worship on Sundays at Bread of Life, we are exploring hope, love, joy, and peace. Even in the midst of grief and loss. Even though God is here among us, we still experience sadness and grief. And even as God is with us, things feel very dark. Now, darkness is part of God's creation, but we people often feel unsure in the dark. In the dark, things look and feel different. It can be uncomfortable and even painful And at the same time, darkness also allows for a slower pace, a different perspective. It creates a change in our experience. The darkness and slower pace can give us time to sit with our grief and sadness to explore our fears and confusion, to pay attention to what makes us angry or feel disappointed. It helps us to realize when we have felt invisible and lost. In the darkness that comes at this time of year, every year, and in the ways we feel like this year has been very dark, we hold on to God's promise for one another. You are not alone. This night, you are not alone. We are all familiar with the darkness. And so we gather to open our lives to the light of God's promises. 
as we prepare to depart, we embrace the darkness that is present in the world and in our lives. God, help us remember your hope and your life. Help us notice how you support and encourage us during this season. And in time, help us support and encourage others who need to know your hope and life. Amen. Go in peace as the Lord loves and cares for you. Thanks be to God. Amen.